Let's talk about the elements of heat transport in soil. Why we care about uh, heat transport in soil? It's because soil heating and cooling are, uh, is very important for uh, biological activity in soil, for plant to germinate, for microbes to operate. It affects the atmospheric exchanges between the soil and the atmosphere or the air above it. And it has uh, also an effect about the range of other physical processes. Uh, think about freezing and thawing of soils in the northern latitudes and so on. The primary mechanisms for heat transport in soils are conduction, radiation and convection, and I'll explain those. Uh, but also we have to keep in mind that there is kind of invisible mechanism of transport uh, that we tend to sometimes forget, and that's vapor transport. So what are the mechanisms of heat transport uh, in soils? Uh, typically, we uh, think of conduction, basically think of this uh, visual example here in which you hold something, you know, you, you, you insulate that handle of the frying pan exactly so heat will not be conducted to your hands. The motion there is uh, you excite molecules and they basically excite their neighbors and that's how heat is being transported along, say, metals and other objects. It happens similarly in soils. The second mode of, uh, of heat transport is by radiation, as we see it when we discuss solar radiation and so on. And the third one is by convection, basically uh, moving uh, hot air from one spot to another. You heat the surfaces that it comes in contact with. And sometimes we will put in this uh, mode also the evaporation, condensation by vapor transport in the soil. The uh, primary mechanism of transport in soil will be conduction. The other mechanism may operate, but conduction is the most important one. And conduction is described by Fourier's law that uh, was developed in 1822. It's an empirical law of transport, uh, very similar to Darcy's law or Ohm's law. Uh, it basically states that the flux of thermal energy in watts per square meter is a linear function of the gradient of temperature in space and a, conducti a thermal conductivity coefficient uh, expressed in watts per meter per Kelvin, per degree Kelvin. So the quantification of heat transport requires us to know something about the soil thermal properties, in particular, the soil uh, thermal conductivity. The soil thermal conductivity is first defined as the amount of heat transferred through a unit area per unit time under unit temperature gradient. It's just a formal definition of what this quantity is. And it is dependent on the soil bulk density, you know, how many grain contacts I have per unit volume, and also on the water content of the soil. So as you increase the, uh, the bulk density, you increase the number of contacts as I alluded to. As I increase the water content to replace an air that has a low thermal conductivity with water that has a high thermal conductivity, and that increases the overall thermal conductivity of the soil. So how is this uh, function looks like uh, as a f uh, the thermal conductivity as a, as a function of water content? For a high porosity or low bulk density and a low porosity sand, for example, these are data. And you can see that uh, the highest increase in thermal conductivity happens at the low water content, and then it kind of flattens out. So as you increase the water content, you improve the thermal conductivity or increase it again because you're replacing an air with a 0.025 watts per meter per kelvin with a 20 times uh, more conductive uh, thermally conductive water here's a uh, an image of the uh, range of thermal conductivities of various uh, geologic materials these are different rock types and the bottom here we have sand and loam which are of interest to us the range is between 0.5 or 0.1 watt per meter per Kelvin to maybe 2 or 2.5, two 3 uh, for uh, uh, saturated and uh, dense soils. The constituents in the soil will have this thermal conductivity. Air is the lowest, and that's why we use it as an insulator. Water is somewhere in between, and quartz would have the highest thermal conductivity. So to summarize, heat conduction is the primary mode of soil heat transport. Fourier's law expressed this uh, phenomena by a law that is very similar to Darcy's law for water flow, uh, where the role of saturated hydraulic conductivity is taken here by the thermal conductivity. The soil thermal conductivity increases with bulk density and water content, and typical values of soil thermal conductivity are of the order of 0.2 to about 2 watts per meter per Kelvin.